Mikel Arteta has been charged by the English FA for a breach of rule 3A.1 following his comments made to the media in an interview after Arsenal played Newcastle, I believe it was on the 4th of November. We're going to take a look at what he said again, and we're going to look into this. But genuinely, the way this has been handled by the PGMOL, by the FA, by the Premier League and the media is a witch hunt. It's a witch hunt, firstly, against Arsenal, their hatred of that football club, to keep them hated, to keep this, the sort of the noise and the, the rhetoric that Arsenal were bad losers, that Arsenal shouldn't be challenging us, that actually the decision was right. And as you saw earlier on this week in the video, and I'll put a little link right now on the screen if you haven't watched it, that was debunked with absolute ease based on previous decisions made. This just demonstrates how they want to keep Arsenal hated, how this is all a Kardashian-esque reality show. And the way in which these managers are being punished under this rule is an absolute dictatorship. It is an absolute abomination as far as I'm concerned. Now, you can laugh and say it serves Arteta right. You can laugh and say it serves Arsenal right. But again, I know what I'll get called out. I'll get called a simp. I'll get told that I'm twerking for Arsenal. It'll be the same dead banter, the same dead challenges. This isn't about me defending Arsenal. It's about me defending a position that one day will impact me and my club, Manchester United, me and my manager one day. It's about not going down a slippery slope and backing a process that damages a rival that one day will damage you. That is what this has always been about for me from day one. Now, this is the statement that's come out from the FA that says that Mikel Arteta has been charged with a breach of the rule E3.1 following comments that he made in the media interviews after Arsenal's Premier League game against Newcastle on the 4th of November. It is alleged that his comments constitute misconduct as they are insulting towards match officials and or detrimental to the game and or bring the game into disrepute. It says here that Arteta has until Tuesday, the 21st of uh, Tuesday, the uh, 21st of November to provide a response to these charges. And even the word disrepute, th this is this is the element here where I feel this is such 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 dictatorship. But what we'll do is we will I want to I want to go back and play what it was that Mikel Arteta said. Let's take a little listen. To talk about the result because you have to talk about how the hell this goal um, stand up and it's incredible. I feel embarrassed, but I have to be the one now coming here to try to defend the club and please ask for help because it's an absolute disgrace that this goal is allowed. It's an absolute disgrace. Because it's not a goal. For many reasons, it's not a goal. For more than one reason, at least, it's not a goal. And it's too much at stake here. We put so much effort. It's so difficult to compete at this level. And it's an absolute disgrace. So that is what he said. Now let's take a look at the rule that he is now allegedly broke. Um, and let's break this down for a moment. So the rule states um, a particular, a, a participant shall not, sorry, shall at all times act in the best interest of the game. So first of all, let's stop it there. This is within the best interest of the game that we are challenging these inconsistent, poor decisions from referees, VAR, and then the responses from PG MOL. As stated in the video earlier on this week, responding to what Howard Webb said, in a vacuum, you can make an argument that Newcastle's goal should stand. But when you compare it to previous decisions this season and last year for similar incidents of hands being on players, small touches, small nudges, small pulls, having zero evidence there was enough force to commit a foul, on, but, but all the previous decisions, fouls were given, on this particular one, they say, well, there's no evidence of force. We debunk that. We rip that apart. It, there is a massive inconsistency which has not been challenged. So that's first and foremost. What Arteta has done, what De Zerbi has done, what fans are doing, and calling out these inconsistencies does not damage the game. If they are responded to correctly, if they are addressed, if they are, if we are educated, if we have honesty and transparency, it will improve the game. And we are not getting that. He says, and shall not act in a manner which is improper or brings the game into disrepute. Now, again, what does disrepute mean? It means, you know, 
talking about it in an inflammatory way, making the, the, the game look bad, you know, creating a stigma against, against the Premier League, against the refereeing. But there is a stigma against it. Arteta isn't creating it. We know it exists. We didn't all think that the refereeing's been amazing and then Mikel Arteta has come out and said this in an interview and we've all gone, oh, yeah. I don't know. I didn't know that the refereeing was bad. I thought it was perfect every week. So he's not bringing the game into disrepute in any way, any shape or any form. It then says that, um, or use any one or a combination of violent conduct. So Mikel Arteta has not hit anybody. So that's out the window straight away. Serious foul play, threatening, abusive, indecent or insulting words or behavior. Now, Mikel Arteta has not swore. He hasn't shouted. He hasn't made threats. He hasn't used swear words. He hasn't called the referees or the associations any type of pejorative. So none of those elements of this rule have been broken. So this is what I say to you all. You can jump on the bandwagon of, yeah, let's get Arteta. But all you are doing, whether you're a City fan, a United fan, a Liverpool fan, Spurs, whoever it may be, is you are creating a rod for your own back in the future. You are not looking beyond the nose on your face. You have such a short-sighted mindset towards this. This deep what the media are doing here. They are not challenging the referees. They are not challenging the PGMOL. We get explanations in a vacuum that by themselves make sense. But when you look at the explanations, the reasoning and justifications across a wider body of work, wider data, wider facts based on previous decisions made, there are more holes in this than a string vest. There really is. And the fans are seeing it. The fans are calling it out. Some ex, some ex pros are calling it out. But the mainstream media protect them. Because of the mainstream media protection and because fans are tribalistic, supporters of clubs by their name are fanatical about their football club, you, you couple that in with that tribalistic nature that we all have instilled, ingrained within us due to the imprint our clubs have left upon us, between us and the media, we create a situation where we allow the referees to get away with this. They will behave like a autocratic dictatorship. They do not respond well to criticism. And when that criticism is the truth, the 100% truth, and as I said about this Newcastle goal, yes, by itself in isolation, you could, oh, okay, that's a fair point. Yes, his hands are on the back, but there's no evidence there was enough force from Joe Linton to, to foul Gabriel. Cool. I, I can accept that. But it now means any foul like that, holding onto an arm, slight pull on the back, uh, same thing, jumping up onto someone's shoulders, can never be given as a foul again, even in real time. And this is the problem. People go, subjectivity, Terry. Subjectivity is a nonsense. Clear and obvious error is a nonsense. Because subjectivity, when you have enough body of evidence, which we now have because of VAR and there's the amount of times we've debated it, and the statements they make, they have made a statement in their eyes as a fact that it's not a goal because there's no proof of pressure on and how much force Joel Linton's using. Now, when anyone's jumping on anybody's back, subjectivity becomes almost irrelevant because you have now created a precedent, which is because you can't tell how much force is being used, therefore it can't be a foul. So now when somebody does it, Hoyland slightly pulls on a shirt, Ben White slightly holds an arm, you can never give the foul. You can never disallow the goal. You can't give the penalties because you've created an, obje an objective situation where you can't tell how much force was used, therefore no foul. And that's my problem with this. These discussions are not happening. And the bit that really insults me is I think, I know 90% of the football terrorists get it. And they insult us. They believe that we lack the intelligence, the understanding of the game to have these in-depth conversations. So they speak to us like it's CBBS, like it's an episode of the Teletubbies or a night in the Winter Garden or whatever it's called that comes on just before the kids go to bed. They talk to us like we're children. They talk to us like we're stupid. And we're not. We remember what they've said in the past. We remember the incidents historically. And when they come to us with new explanations, we go, hang on a minute. 
That's not what you said two months ago, three months ago, nine months ago, a year ago. But the media goes, yes, sir, no, sir, free bags full, sir. Managers call it out, especially in the heat of the moment. Remember, this is straight after the game. Now they're being now they're being called out. The FA are acting like absolute dictators. You do not challenge us. You do not say we've done anything wrong, even though the whole of football knows they're doing something wrong. It's an abomination to me. And listen, I respect the whole of the, 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 the terrorist community. You guys can write whatever comments you want. Call me a simp. Say I'm twerking for Arsenal. If that's what you believe, then so be it. I'm not going to change what I'm saying, my quest, you know, the, the crusade that I'm on when it comes to trying to make football better. I'm never going to back down. Not today, not tomorrow, not next week. No amount of insults you throw my way are going to change that. No amount of emails from the PGMOL to me are going to change what I'm doing. It's not going to happen. This is not about Arsenal per se, even though they are part of the subject matter today. It is a wider issue that has seen Liverpool screwed over this season. And I always get a comment from people that say, well, what about the team outside the top six? They call it like the top six mafia. <laughs> well, I've, I've called out the Wolves situation on multiple occasions across all my platforms. Wolves have been robbed so badly in recent weeks. Man United this season have been robbed so bad. The media don't even talk about it. Wolves have actually been robbed three times, once against Manchester United as well, and I called that out. Man City, the goal, they, the, the winning goal in the Wolves game. Man should have been sent off. I've called so many of these situations out this year. So many of them I've called out. It's not just about Arsenal. Get with the program and try and help fix football. So do us a favor, and I'd love to get your comments below. Please check out our TikTok account as well. You can scan the QR code on the screen right now. Until next time, take care. Goodbye. God bless. See you all soon.